Can we get a warm welcome for His Holiness Bhakti Brinka Govinda Swami Maharaj. Hare Krishna. So, Manisha gave you an introduction with all the technicalities, but for us, Maharaj is coming home. This is his home. In 1976, when Sri Sri Radha Gopinath, our beloved deities were installed, Maharaj came for the first time to Toronto from America, and Sri Sri Radha Kirchar Gopinath stole his heart, and he decided to stay here for many years, and he actually cooked with his own hands and did much service at New Ramuna Dam. So this is his home, and I firmly believe a piece of his heart remains in Toronto at New Ramuna Dam, even though he resides now in Sri Vrindavan Dam, the land of Krishna. But this is his home, and we'd like to go out there and give a warm, warm welcome to Maharaj, as well as, where did they go? Oh, there you go. There, our humble Anandamurti Prabhu and Yogindra Prabhu. We have a bad habit of shortening your names, but. <laughs> so, if it was my way, I'd go out there and have all of you offer a garland to Maharaj as a homecoming. But there's, we can't offer 500,000 garlands today. So I like to do it with words. So when I say Hare, I want you to say Krishna as loud as you can. Hare! Krishna! No hands raised. Maharaj traveled from Mauritius just to come here for this weekend. Over 24 hours of in transit to come here for a weekend. He's going back to Mauritius. So Mauritius devotees will wonder why Maharaj came all the way with that welcome. So can we try it again? Hare! One more time from the bottom of your heart. Hare! His Holiness Bhakti Bringa Govinda Swami Maharaj Ki! Srila Prabhupada Ki! Jai 
Jaya Giri Bardari Gopi Jana Balaba Jaya Giri Bardari Jaya Giri Bardari Jasod Nana Jaya Braja Jana Ranjana Jaya Jasod Nana Jaya Jasod Nana Jaya Braja Jana Ranjana Jaya Jamuna Thirabana Chari Jaya Kunja Bihari Jaya Kunja Bihari Jamuna Thirabana Chari Jaya Jaya Radha Madhava Jaya Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Jaya Jaya Radha Madhava Jaya Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Jai Srila Prabhupada Ki, Jai Shri Shri Radha Kirchor Gopinath Ki, Jai Toronto Iskan Ki, Nitai Gaur Premanandi Hari Ro. Om Agyan Timirandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chakshurun Militan Jaina Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale, Srimate Bhaktivedanta Swamini Tinamane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Vicharane Nirvisesha Shunyavadi Paschitade Zitarane Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakta Brinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Rama Hari Rama 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 Hare Krishna, dear devotees. We are very happy to see you all today at New Ramuna Dam. Uh, I'm especially blessed to be here because when I come here, I get to have darshan of my beloved God brothers and God sisters who are sitting over here. We have 
His Grace Shubhavilas Prabhu and his good wife Ashalata Mataji is here. Praharna Devi Dasi, my god sister. We're like brothers and sisters since 1972. Sitting behind Praharna, Subhuti Devi Dasi. She's my Punjabi mother. We have been very, very close friends since about 1973. I joined the Hare Krishna Society in 1971. Thank you so much. I joined the Hare Krishna Society in 1971 in Buffalo, New York. And then on September 20th, 1972, my temple president came to me in the morning and he said, Today I want to go to Toronto because they're installing the deities, Radha Krishna deities. He said, would you like to come with me? And I said, yes, definitely. So we jumped in a car and we drove up to Toronto and this was over at 187 Gerard Street in Cabbage Town. And I remember staying in the back of the temple and staring at Radha Gopinath, and my prayer was, please save me, please save me, please give me your shelter and your mercy. And after the feast, after the installation ceremony, my temple president from Buffalo, he said, now it's time to drive back. And I folded my hands and I said, it's so enlivening here in Toronto. I said, could I please stay here for two weeks to become surcharged in the Association of the Devotees? And my temple president, he was a different type of temple president. He was very, uh, he was very understanding. He looked at me and he said, yes. He said, if being here will help you to feel uh, more enlivened in your Krishna consciousness, you stay, you stay here for two weeks. I said, thank you so much. And then two weeks later, I happened to walk into the temple office just when the phone call was coming. It was my temple president from Toronto, excuse me, from Buffalo. And he said, now it is time for him to come back. And the temple president, he said, just a moment, and he put his hand over the receiver. He said, he said, your temple president wants you to come back. And I said, please ask him if I can stay. I said, the devotees here are so wonderful. The devotees here are so kind. The devotees here are so compassionate. The devotees here are so loving and they're so enlivened. Ask him if I could stay here. And so he picked up the phone, he said, he said, he's feeling so wonderful here in his Krishna consciousness, he wants to know if he can stay. And because my temple president was a very wonderful person, he said, if it's the best thing for his spiritual life, please tell him that I allow him to stay there. So, Kircho Gropinath, they saved me. And I served in ISKCON Toronto from 1972 to 1977. And at that time, I defected and I went to India and uh, I left the North American continent at that time and I, and I haven't lived here since that time. I've always been on the other side of the world. So today is really a, it's like a homecoming for me to come back and to see this temple. We were all so young, we all worked so enthusiastically to procure this temple for Srila Prabhupada and after 50 years to see that the temple room is filled, that Krishna consciousness is thriving 
is such a great pleasure to my heart. So my, my greatest thanks to my God brothers and my God sisters and to all of the people who have assisted you all over the years. I think all of us, we owe a great debt of gratitude to these people. And they're very humble Vaishnavs, but really they have kept our Krishna consciousness movement thriving here in your beautiful nation of Canada. I was told that I have a very short time to speak today. And um, they originally they told me I had a half an hour. And, uh, and I guess that's about the time that I do have. Generally, it takes me a half an hour just to say hello to the people. But I would like to continue uh, doing something that I was doing with the devotees in Mauritius before I came over here. And that is just reading uh, Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Uh, Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita is the authorized biography of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You all know that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in this world. He is Krishna in this Kali Yuga age. He appeared in West Bengal approximately 550 years ago. And he came here for spreading love of God indiscriminately. And he did his work through so many... Lord Chaitanya, he only stayed in this world for 48 years, but he empowered the hearts of his disciples to spread Krishna consciousness. And he personally taught them Krishna consciousness, just like our Srila Prabhupada. Many of his disciples, he personally taught them and he personally invested time in training them and they became empowered. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he also had his disciples that he, that he empowered and he trained to the science of spreading transcendental love through the process of bhakti yoga and devotional service. Teaching people how to come to the blessed shelter of the lotus feet of Krishna. We know that in this world, when we have the material mindset, we're always looking for the shelter of something which is impermanent. But in the conclusion of Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, my dear Arjun, I'd like to request you to abandon all different types of yogas and all different types of dharmas and activities and simply come to me and accept my shelter. He says, Sarva dharmam purit jagja mam ekam sharanam. And this word sharan in the Sanskrit language, it means shelter. He said, just come to me and accept my loving shelter. And he said, if you do that, I promise to you that if you have any uh, imperfections within your heart, I will take responsibility for that. And not only that, I will elevate you to the transcendental platform of life. And he concludes by saying, Masuchaha. Masuchaha means don't fear. Don't fear to take my shelter. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he wanted everybody, please just accept the sweet shelter of Krishna's lotus feet. Please come to this beautiful person, Krishna, and just accept and embrace his lotus feet. So we'll read a few verses today of Srila Sanatana Goswami, one of the disciples of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, receiving instructions from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu about the nature of Krishna. So, 
With your permission, I will read for a few minutes. Is that okay? Thank you. So this is from Chaitanya Charitamrita, and this is uh, Madhya Lila, which is the middle portion of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's life. And it's chapter 21, and it's entitled, The Opulence and the Sweetness of Lord Krishna. And this chapter begins with uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explaining the uh, unparalleled opulence of God to Sanatan. He's saying Krishna is, he, his prowess is so inconceivable that not even the greatest of the learned saints can understand who he is or what his nature is. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, after he spoke about the opulence and the potency of Lord Krishna, his heart became moved and he decided to speak about the sweet beauty of Krishna. So we'll read about Krishna's sweet beauty for a few minutes, okay? In text number 102, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, My dear Sanatan, the sweet, attractive, transcendental form of Krishna is so nice. Just try to understand it. Even a fractional understanding of Krishna's beauty can merge the entire world into the ocean of love. He attracts all living entities throughout the world. The transcendental form of Krishna is shown to the world by Lord Krishna's internal spiritual potency, which is a transformation of pure goodness. The, this jewel-like form of Krishna is the most confidential treasure of his devotees. This form is manifest from Krishna's eternal activities and his pastimes. So we're always speaking about Krishna. And it's really important for us to understand Krishna is really a person. And Krishna is not a philosophical concept. Krishna is not just an energy. But Krishna is the supreme person who possesses all wonderful qualities. So he says, the wonder of Krishna and his personal feature is so great that it attracts even Krishna to want to taste his own association. You can imagine how beautiful that is. Krishna is so beautiful, if he sees himself in a mirror, he says, who is that? I want to be like that. Thus Krishna becomes eager to taste that one, his own wonderful beauty. Total beauty, knowledge, wealth, strength, fame, renunciation are the six opulences of Krishna. He is eternally situated in his opulences. Many times we hear the word Bhagawan. And Bhagawan means uh, one who is full in all opulences. And uh, Srila Prabhupada would always explain to us that these six opulences, the six opulences of the Supreme Personality of Godhead are no one, no one has beauty who can equal the beauty of Krishna. No one has wealth that can equal the wealth of the Supreme Person. No one has strength, no one has fame that can equal the Supreme Personality of Godhead. No one has renunciation in the same way that the Supreme Person has. So Srila Prabhupada would always say, a person who has 
These six qualities in full, he is known as Bhagawan, the possessor of all opulences, Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So here, Lord Chaitanya is saying, just try to understand. Krishna is so beautiful that he attracts himself. And Srila Prabhupada, he gave us one book called Nectar of Devotion that was um, his commentary on Srila Rupa Goswami's Bhakti Rasam Ritta Sindhu. And in that, in that book, there's a passage that Krishna is in one of his palaces in Dwarka. And in the palaces, Krishna's palaces, all the columns of the palaces are made out of polished, brilliant gems. And it explains that one day Krishna was walking by one of those columns and he looked in the, the column and he saw himself. And it was like, who is it? What is it? I have to have that. He's too beautiful. Krishna is truly a beautiful person. Ornaments caress the body. But the transcendental body of Krishna is so beautiful that it beautifies the ornaments that Krishna wears. Therefore, Krishna's body is said to be the ornament of all ornaments. That's nice, isn't it? It says, generally we wear some ornament to make our body more beautiful. But Krishna, he's so beautiful that when you put ornaments on him, he makes the ornaments become more beautiful. And therefore it's said that Krishna's body is the ornament of all ornaments. Despite the wonderful beauty of Krishna, there is his three curved way of standing. You know, Krishna is called Tribunga Sundar, meaning he's, his flute is going this way and his hips are going this way and his legs are going another way, a threefold bending form. His three, four, his three curved style of standing beautifies his form. And above all these beautiful features, Krishna's eyes dance and they move obliquely acting like arrows to pierce the minds of all of his devotees. When the arrows succeed in hitting its targets, the minds of Krishna's devotees become agitated. That's a, it's a nice example. It says that Krishna's form is beautiful, the way he stands is beautiful, his face is beautiful, his eyebrows are beautiful. And later in this discussion, which we won't have time to touch because the time is limited, it's explained that Krishna's eyebrows, they're like bows of, excuse me, they're like an archer's bow. And it says that they're connected to his ears. And when he smiles beautifully, the string of the bow becomes stretched. And then when Krishna glances at one of his devotees, he shoots arrows into the hearts of the devotee. And then the devotee becomes overwhelmed with loving sentiment for Krishna. And our Srila Prabhupada, he told us that our real business in the International Society for Krishna Consciousness is to become the mad lovers of Krishna. So, by performing devotional service in the way that your spiritual masters have taught you and in the way that they have learned from their spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, our hearts and our consciousness can become purified to the point where Krishna will become attracted by our service. And someday Krishna will glance at us and he will shoot the arrow deep inside your heart. 
And when he does that, your heart will melt in transcendental love and you will say, yes, Krishna, I am yours forever. The beauty, the beauty of Krishna's body is so attractive that it attracts not only the demigods and other living entities within this world, but also attracts personalities who live in the spiritual sky as well, including the Narayans, who are expansions of Krishna's personality. The minds of the Narayans are thus attracted by the beauty of Krishna's body. In addition, the goddesses of fortune, the Lakshmis, who are the wives of the Narayans, and the women, and are the women described in the Vedas as being most chaste, they are also attracted by the wonderful beauty of Krishna. So yes, my dear devotees, he is a person. Yes, my dear devotees, if you will chant Hare Krishna without committing offenses, yes, my dear devotees, if you will read the words of Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charitamrita, Yes, my dear devotees, if you will serve uh, uh, the mission of the Lord to spread love, compassion, and humanity throughout the world, your hearts will become purified and you will one day attain that cherished gift of having the vision of Krishna before you. This is what we're all working for. This is why we're chanting Maha Mantra. This is why we're performing these activities of devotional service. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has told us, Chaito Darpana Marjanam. If you chant Hare Krishna, your heart will become washed. He has said, Bhava Maha Devagni Nirvapanam. If you chant Hare Krishna, the, the fire, the problems that we're always dealing with in this material world, they will become manageable. And he has said, if you chant Hare Krishna purely, that the lotus of your heart will open. And when the lotus of your heart will open, you, the eternal living being, the eternal soul who is part and parcel of Krishna, that will become realized. This is the process of self-realization in Krishna consciousness. I have one more minute, so I'll read one more verse. Actually, I will stop there because if I read another verse, I will go over time. And since I have just come home to Toronto, I don't want to be driven out the door too fast. <laughs> These talks of Krishna are so sweet. Talks of Krishna are so wonderful. And another of the great disciples of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his name was Srila Rupa Goswami. And Rupa Goswami has told us what is the essence of the process of bhakti yoga. There he has said, tan nama rupa charitadi sukirtananu smitto kramena rasana manasini yoga. Tishtan Braje Tad Anuragi Jananugami Kalam Nayet Iti Upadesar. He has said that the, the very, very essence of everything that we're doing in Krishna consciousness is described in this way that all of us should hear very, very nicely 
about the name, the form, the qualities, and the pastimes of Krishna 24 hours a day. And he has said that if we do that, our minds will become perfectly controlled and our senses will become perfectly controlled, which is the goal of any yoga practice, meaning coming to perfection of yoga through controlling the mind and the senses. And then he says, in that perfected stage, tishtan brajetad anuragi jananugami, then think, read, understand about Krishna's activities in the spiritual world, see how his blessed devotees in the spiritual world serve him with unmotivated love and follow in their footsteps. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given us all something very great. Um, he has come to give this to every person of the world without any restriction. And his methodology of doing that is through the very loud chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. You may have one understanding of what chanting Hare Krishna means. But if you spend more time chanting this mantra clearly, if you spend more time contemplating the sweet sound of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, you will become very advanced in your spiritual understanding and your natural feeling of love of God will arise from within your heart. So thank you all very much. Hare Krishna. Now there will be, now there will be a very wonderful Krishna Prashadam served. Unfortunately, I didn't cook it today. <laughs> if it had been 50 years ago, it would have been me cooking it. But uh, I didn't cook today, but I'm sure it will be wonderful. And then after Prashadam, if you like chanting Hare Krishna Mantra, Please stay, and myself, and Ananda Murti and Yogendra, we will be leading uh, the chanting of the Maha Mantra. And just one short announcement um, on behalf of a friend of my most dear friend, who is also from the Canadian Yatra. His name is Shivaram Swami Maharaj. Shivaram Swami Maharaj, he lives in Hungary where he has a very beautiful yatra of Krishna consciousness. And Shivaram Swami Maharaj is a very wonderful author and he has written a series of books called Krishna in Vrindavan. They're very, very beautiful. And there's a gentleman standing behind me back over here, uh, an Indian gentleman and a young Western gentleman. And they are disciples of uh, Shivaram Sami Maharaj. They have been in North America for the past month. They're distributing sets of Shivaram Sami Maharaj's books. Um, they do not have any books to sell you because Everybody has bought all the books, but they have examples of the books. Please, everybody, take a look. If you like Krishna Kata, if you like hearing pastimes of Krishna, if you like nice philosophy of Krishna consciousness, take a look over here, order a set of books. Hare Krishna. Thank you.